Hello, my name is Zachary Gardner, and today I'm going to be giving my presentation over using GPS and GIS in the classroom. The date is June 18th, 2018, and this is for uh, Dr. Longing in an introduction to instructional technology. And so uh, I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, let's get started. Okay, so first off, what is GPS? GPS, or Global Positioning System. It is where satellites orbit the Earth and send information back to receivers on the ground. It is used mainly for agricultural use and uh, for directions of construction. So, what are some of the receivers that GPSs would be used for? Well, some of the most common receivers that you would know of would be your if you have direct TV or dish network or something like that, or satellite internet, and your cell phones are GPS receivers. So now that we understand what GPS is, now we can look at what GIS is. GIS is the Geographical Information System, and uh, it's kind of uh, a little difficult to grasp, but GIS is a software program. It's not necessarily a, a, a physical like satellite like a GPS is, if that makes any sense. And this information comes in many forms, such as the live data feeds, 3D maps, topography, and ocean-based maps. And what it is, is it pulls information from GPS. It feeds off of the, the GPS systems, like I was stated. It gathers that data. And uh, like your 3D maps are, you know, everything is very high quality with GIS. It's a very interesting tool, but we'll get more into it. Okay, the different types of GPS and GIS, GIS systems, you have Google Earth, which is a GPS system that is uh, will take you anywhere you want to go. GPS is a positioning system. You know, it's not necessarily a show you like what's there, and that's what GIS is for. GIS is showing you what's there. GPS is showing you where you're at. So ArcMap is a GIS system, and what ArcMap does is uh, with the GIS is it has base base map layers uh, with such as topography aerial view photos um, and on the topography topography uh, I'll show an example later but what it has is the different elevations of your environment and like um, your different types of um, areas that are uh, flat lowlands streams ponds lakes and rivers and, and that sort of stuff and then uh, Google Maps is actually an integration of both GPS and GIS systems. If you ever get on Google Maps when you're, say, uh, you know, you're riding passenger and you're doing directions and you see uh, these different restaurants popping up on the side of the road, you know, that's coming up ahead. And that is the GIS coming up because it's showing you what's there. And then your location is from your GPS. So now that we kind of understand the differences of GPS and GIS, uh, we can kind of move forward a little bit. Okay, and there's this thing called Connect Ed. Okay, and in May 2014, the White House it was signed off on Connect Ed, which allows ArcGIS to be available to K through 12 schools for free. And now this is an online mapping sof software. ArcGIS is it is not free to the general public. Uh, GIS uh, is not owned by the government, but GPS is. And so uh, the information uh, on this is on the on the GPS government website, and we will visit that website here in a bit. It is not cited into my bibliography because I did not pull information uh, into my reflective paper on it. So, but I am including it in my presentation because I do want to show you. And what can it be used for in the classroom? Well, it can be used for pretty much anything. You know, it's so diverse. Uh, when you go into social studies, you have your demographics, and you can go and visit his historical events. Um, and in science, uh, it is very useful going to look at locations of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, as well as different animal habitats and the effect of man on various environments. You know, when you go and visit um, the jungles down in South America and stuff like that and look at the effects of logging and uh, um, how when you have a place that's not regulated efficiently by the government, uh, you can tell where those impacts are being taken place. And also when you teach uh, um, the theory of evolution and Darwinism and stuff, you know, when you go to the Galapagos Islands, you know, you can take your students down there virtually. And it just kind of helps them wrap their mind around where this at, where this is at in the world, if that makes sense. Okay, and then in mathematics, um, 
demographic survey data on ethnicities uh, in male and female populations, uh, mainly for statistics, and it, it's very helpful for that. So this is an English lesson that I found, and I will, uh, and this is in my bibliography. If you want to go uh, look at this, if you are an English teacher, it's very helpful. I'm a science teacher, but I've seen this, and I really did like how this was laid out. It was uh, very detailed and stuff, but it's a narrative writing skills lesson, and these students will use the ArcGIS to describe their neighborhoods, surroundings, geographical layout, street names, bus routes, people, etc., and with a geographical layout, meaning uh, like if there's hills there, if there's a stream running through beside their house, excuse me, and all of the sort, and so... The teacher would have these students write short stories for different audiences and convey, excuse me, and convey the detailed perspective of the area as well as the people, places, and environment. And I put in parentheses is the Ed, Ed Tech Magazine article that is in my bibliography. Okay, now we're getting into geocaching. This is very interesting. Well, first off, what is geocaching? It's using a GPS to locate small hidden treasures in a certain area and a cool way to get students interactive in the local environment. And using this as an educational tool, let me hide this real quick so you can see. Um, as you can see, uh, using this as an educational uh, tool, it's uh, take students on a small walk and let them interact with their environment. Uh, give background info on the surrounding area and have them discuss different species of plants and animals and use angles and math, um, you know, for directions to go to the geocache, you know, saying make a 90 degree right turn, uh, about a, a 45 degree left turn, you know, to get there. And it's uh, it's just really neat to get them out of the classroom and interactive in their uh, local environment. And uh, this, uh, let's see, we'll go to you how to use geocaching. Okay, so what you do is you go to geocaching.com and play and you download the app and then you find geocache and log in and journal. Uh, you, then you do your date, time, signature and, and then you place it back. That's, you know, very important. But uh, we'll go ahead and visit there. And uh, it's very, uh, very neat. And this is the geocaching website and it's very, very simple. You have to sign up. It's all free. And I'm from the central Arkansas area around Conway. And as you can see, there's 803 geocaches just in my area. So it's very available still even to this day, even though it's been around for a few years. And it's a, it's a very unique tool. And it's simple. Like I said, you create an account and you find your geocache and you share your experience. And it's very neat. Okay. So now that I was here, I'm going to go ahead and take you to the ArcGIS. This is the main website for the ArcGIS, and you can go and visit here, and it's really neat. Uh, it just has a bunch of different background information on the uh, ArcGIS, and, uh, but when you come over here, I wanted to really show you this. This is what a topograph, uh, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, a topographic map looks like, topography. And as you can see right in here, you see these little lines, these are contour lines, cartography. And so what this represents is your elevations and the closer they are together, the steeper the ground and the further away they are, the flatter the ground is. And each line usually represents around 20 feet. And I used arc map, as you can see right here, very much uh, when I was, uh, uh, when I was a woodsman for a certain timber company, uh, it was a very essential tool for us to use while we were um, uh, while we were uh, working and stuff, using aerial photos and topographic maps, and uh, for cruising timber and laying out streamside management zones. And uh, it's a very beneficial tool. It's very very helpful. And right here, this is the website I was talking about with the GPS.gov. This is the official U.S. government information about the global positioning system. And you can also find out information here how to get uh, ArcGIS into your classroom, and it's really a uh, it's a very helpful uh, website if you're new to GPS and trying to figure out how it works and everything like that. It's very it's very very helpful, and I highly recommend coming here and reading through some of this. I did pull some of most of my information from articles and uh, educational uh, areas, uh, more or less based around teaching. Uh, and using GPS and GIS, and I didn't spend a whole lot of time on how GPS works. So this is a great uh, place to, to start looking for that. But anyways, we'll go back to the presentation. 
And so, anyways, we're going to keep moving on. In conclusion, using GPS and GIS in an educational environment is never ending, and it's a great way to get students engaged in the curriculum. It's very fun, and it takes you places you cannot physically go. Like I was stating earlier, you know, taking kids to the Galapagos Islands, you know, you just can't fill out a permission slip and take them down there, you know. So, uh, anyways, it's uh, uh, just a great way to help students express their creativity uh, while they're exploring around the world and learning the information that they need tied in with your Common Core uh, curriculum standards. It's just an amazing tool, and it's just going to keep getting better, and I'm really looking forward to what uh, is going to continue doing uh, for our future generations of students. So anyways, I'm going to go back down here and show my reflective paper. And here's my reflection on this. And I'll give you just a moment to read through this. Alrighty, and here we go down into my bibliography, and I'll let you look through here just a second, but it's also in my presentation, so I'm going to go ahead and jump back to my presentation. Uh-oh. Whoops. Here we go. What did I do here? Let me go back. Uh-oh. Something's going on. But anyways, um, but now going back uh, to uh, geocaching. It's a very interesting uh, website to go back to and everything, and I highly recommend it uh, as a uh, as an educator um, using that from a, a teaching standpoint. So, anyways, here's my bibliography. I'll just kind of let you look through this for a moment. And uh, if you have any questions, please comment and. Uh, uh, drop a like and everything like that and if you want to know more information about this I'll be more than happy to visit with you uh, please send me a message and I will be more than happy to email this to you and all of my sources to you and uh, anyways thanks again for everything guys and so I look forward to uh, using this in my classroom more and just uh, um, just making it more fun and more interactive for my students and just helping that, uh, helping them grow uh, and just uh, helping them explore and use their creative thinking, their critical thinking skills, and just helping them become more successful and help them learn the information that they need better. But anyways, thanks again. Y'all have a good one.